Okay, so for this week of awareness meditation training, we are exploring uh, working with thoughts in awareness. And, uh, you know, there's two titles I have for this talk. One is Popping Thoughts in Awareness, which refers to the new little social meditation we're going to practice. Um, the longer title, which kind of plays off of uh, the long, detailed Tibetan Buddhist titles of a lot of texts, <laughs> is uh, Working with Thoughts as Seeming Obstacles in Awareness Meditation. So that's the longer version. So let's talk about how we have worked with thoughts so far in this training. First, we started with basically the view of awareness meditation training, particularly the flavor of view that we find in Sogjin. So the first thing we say is that thoughts aren't a problem. That's the starting point for at least a conceptual view. Even if it's not our experience, this is our starting point. And we start with that because um, if we go into practice automatically thinking thoughts are on obstacles, it's going to be very difficult to recognize and, and rest in awareness. So we at least start with that idea, even if it's not our experience in this moment. Um, we, I read uh, some passages from self-liberation through seeing with naked awareness. And there's one section there that I read, I'm gonna read it again. And this is pointing out awareness and it's pointing out awareness uh, through uh, thoughts. So the passage again is thoughts in the past are clear and empty and leave no traces behind. Thoughts in the future are fresh and unconditioned by anything. And in the present moment, when your mind remains in its own condition without constructing anything, awareness at that moment is uh, in itself quite ordinary. Okay, so this is a starting point. Then there's another passage, which sort of points to the question, okay, well, what do I do in practice? And again, this is from the like ultimate view. Like if we can practice this way from the get-go, these are the instructions basically. Um, since merely allowing thoughts to settle into their own condition without trying to modify them in any way is sufficient, how can you say that you are not able to remain in a calm state? Since allowing thoughts to be just as they are without trying to do anything about them is sufficient, how can you say that you are not able to do anything with regard to them? Okay, so this is the question, what do I do with them? The answer is don't do anything with them. You don't need to modify them. Um, a few more passages here. Since the arising of discursive thoughts and they're being liberated, occur simultaneously, how can you say that you are unable to apply an antidote? So here, antidote would be also practice. I have a thought that's an obstacle. What's the antidote? What do I do? Um, but their liberation here occurs instantly, simultaneously, according to this view and, and the actual direct experience. So that's why we use the phrase self-liberation. Okay, a few more passages here. You should relinquish all notions of past and abandon all precedents. You should cut off all plans and expectations with respect to the future. And in the present, you should not grasp at thoughts that arise, but allow the mind to remain in a state like the sky. So we remain in the vast openness of awareness and thoughts arise and pass in awareness. So we don't do anything with them, but we remain like the openness of the sky. And then last, even though these appearances that you perceive do arise, if you do not grasp at them, then that is Buddhahood. Appearances are not erroneous in themselves, but because of your grasping at them, errors come into existence. So when we start grasping at them, thoughts become obstacles. Okay, so this is like how we set up all of this. And it's like, if we can practice from in this way from the very beginning, then that's what we do. But if we can't do that, then the question is like, okay, well, now, now what do I do? You know, what, do, what can I do in practice um, that will help me to rest in awareness like this as thoughts arise? Um, well, first we experimented with concentrating and coasting into awareness, okay? Where we intentionally blocked thoughts, really. We were blocking all distractions um, to single pointedly focus. And then we released the concentration and then... Ideally, in that moment, or a few moments after releasing concentration, we experienced the openness of awareness. So maybe we can rest in awareness itself until we get distracted again. Um, and that's really useful because we can repeat that. We can gain confidence in recognizing awareness that this is possible, even though thoughts still present themselves as obstacles, there's possibility here. But we're blocking thoughts. That's what we're doing. So today we're going to do something a little different. Um, and. Uh, I'm going to set up this practice first by sharing uh, a, a passage and a few points here, but we're going to use uh, a new technique that we're calling popping noting or popping thoughts and awareness. Um, 
it's going to, it's going to be a little bit more energetic. I'll say there's going to be a little bit of energy to it. There's going to be a little bit more sense of doing, which is really interesting because as we just, you know, as I just shared the ideas to not do anything, but here, okay, that's not working. So how can I work with thoughts? Well, here's a little subtle way of doing something in practice to help us work with thoughts and rest and awareness. Now, um, I want to read a passage from Patrul Rinpoche, The Crucial Points of Practice is the title. To know a bit about meditation practice without knowing how to set thoughts free results in the meditative absorptions of the gods. Gaining certainty in one's realization comes with gaining skill in how to set thoughts free just as they are rising. Focusing wandering mind through calm meditation may muffle negative mental states for a while, but as soon as circumstances change, ordinary discursive thoughts will just rear up again like poison that's laying dormant until you've uh, really understood the subtle crucial point, how thoughts are set free just as they rise. Like ripples on water, ordinary discursive thoughts, wanting this, not wanting that, pop up all of a sudden. But once you've learned how to uh, liberate thoughts just as they arise, they cannot take hold. And so they vanish. This is a vital point that must be understood. So these instructions are even more clear about how to practice if, if we can practice this way from the, from the beginning, let's practice like that. Um, and here, it, there's an instruction that um, about, uh, you know, meditative absorptions of God, uh, of, of gods, and uh, muffling negative states through concentration. So when we're doing concentration with coasting, that's what we're doing. We're entering into a calm state, we're blocking thoughts, but ultimately that's not going to do the trick for allowing us to rest in awareness because to rest in awareness means to rest in awareness even while thoughts move as they come and go, okay? So um, concentration can help us as a first step, but it's ultimately not gonna, gonna get us there in the end. So um, the, the ideal goal here is self-liberation and, and all the instructions I've given here are all different ways of stating to just let thoughts be on their own, to not do anything with them. They take care of themselves, okay? So again, if we can't do that, okay, well, here's a new technique that we can work with. So this technique we're gonna to use today, this popping thoughts and awareness, um, comes actually, it's inspired from a practice I've mentioned sometimes in some of the trainings from T uh, Tibetan Buddhism and Sogjin, and it's the use of a syllable pet, P-H-A-T, um, pronounced more like pet, okay? And what is typically done is, and I'm gonna share some instructions here, but basically, um, uh, distract, we get distracted with thoughts and we shout the syllable pet. We're not going to do any shouting today, but this is the traditional practice, okay? Um, I did this practice out in the uh, middle of a forest in a cabin, nobody around, and, you know, did this practice like shout pet, you know, and it cuts through. There's this, there's this power, this energy to it. It cuts through thoughts and then we rest. Distraction thought, distracting thoughts come up again and we shout the syllable and then we rest again. So the technique is really, really simple. It's really effective for what it does. Um, so there's a little bit of a startling there, a little bit of a shock that happens. And similar to kind of concentration and coasting, this technique allows us to enter into awareness. Um, now I'm gonna read a few instructions here. So this is from Pacho Rinpoche again, the extraordinary teaching of uh, glorious sovereign wisdom. So, he says, first, keep the mind relaxed and neither diffused nor concentrated remain without thought. In this state of equilibrium and relaxation, abruptly utter a mind shattering pet, forcefully loud and short. And there it is, nothing at all but wonderment and illumination. An illuminated wonderment is all pervading freedom of mind. And in that inexpressible, all penetrating freedom of mind, recognize the Dharmakaya's total presence. A direct introduction into the nature of mind is the first imperative. Okay. So this is giving the instructions of the technique, um, but uh, it's uh, pointing out awareness a little bit more here, okay? But let's talk about this um, in the sense of, of working with distracted thoughts. So this comes from uh, Sokni Rinpoche. Um, and this actually was in the context of a longer like talk he, he gave, I think. And he talks about before this, he's going to mention wine here in a minute. So I'm going to say, why would he be talking about wine? It's really interesting. And so Jin, just like we say, there's no problems with any thoughts in tra uh, traditional Buddhism and like, you know, 
Hinayana and, and uh, there might be all these precepts, don't drink alcohol, don't do this, don't do that. And so Jin, they're like, have a little wine, go practice, you know, like eat whatever foods. It's not a big deal because they're trying to point out that none of that's a problem with respect to the ultimate nature of awareness. Now, it may be a relative issue depending on our health and things like that, but both awareness is not. So he, uh, the, what he says before this is like, uh, grab a bottle of wine, get in your car, go drive up to a mountain, do some little practice and have some wine. <laughs> okay, so here the passage is, um, then when you have had some wine, you sit again, quiet, relaxed, and pet, you shout this pet. When you get distracted, uh, you, you shout this when you get distracted. Then you sit without trying to change anything, be completely natural, but without thinking. Don't even think that I'm meditating and just sit. When you get distracted, you do the same thing again. And when you finish the session, you should drive home carefully. <laughs> I like these instructions. Um, okay, so the technique is, is pretty simple. Now with us, we're gonna use the word pop. So we're the central instruction here is we're gonna sit, relax and rest in awareness. Uh, we get sufficiently distracted by thoughts, okay? Not with every thought that arises, but when we feel really um, sufficiently distracted or we feel sufficiently diffuse in a kind of opaque way. And then all of a sudden we realize that we use this phrase pop to cut through the distraction, to pop the distraction, and then we rest, okay? So this is a spontaneous practice. Now, we're saying this in a normal voice because uh, you know we're practicing together and so we're not gonna be shouting because that's kind of intense. It's not, it, you could certainly experiment with that if you feel comfortable uh, and you're not gonna disturb other people uh, doing it, but uh, we're doing it in a normal voice, okay? Uh, just regular volume. Um, last, uh, previously we've done uh, social meditation where we uh, use phrases spaciousness and release, right? We experience spaciousness, get a little distracted, we say release. Um, there's a little bit difference here. Release has a little bit softer feel to it. Pop is a little bit more, has more direction, it's more pointed. And so there's a sense of intentionality, a sense of agency that's pretty explicit in this practice. Therefore, there's more energy. Um, if uh, you've explored language and linguistics, you might have heard uh, of two types of verbs, intransitive verbs and uh, transitive verbs. Intransitive verbs do not have an agent. There's no, there's no person or thing acting upon something else. It just happens, okay? So like with self-liberation, it's, it's more of an intransitive sense. We just let the process take care of itself. Here with this uh, pop, there's a sense of transitive nature to it. We're, we're doing something, okay? So this is something we can sink our teeth into. Okay, here's a technique and here's something I can do. Um, uh, there is a sense of surprise here, okay? A sense of... Um, hopefully in a good way, because since we know we're doing the practice and it's not like somebody coming out of the middle of nowhere and trying to scare us, you know, there is a little bit of a surprise, a little startle to the system that, that awakens it all of a sudden. Um, so that's partly how this uh, works of wiping the conceptual mind sort of clean all of a sudden, even for a millisecond. And uh, what can happen here is that like after this thoughts may arise, but we're still resting in awareness. And so we might be able to recognize that. And then again, after almost like water trickling and then becoming, you know, a waterfall, um, some point we might get really distracted. At that point, we're not resting in awareness. And so we use pop. Okay. But it's interesting. Pay attention, pay attention to the openness of awareness. After you say it, pay attention to the fact that you very well might be resting awareness even as thoughts start to arise, okay? Um, one reason this technique uh, works, I would say in a linguistic uh, manner is uh, through phonetics. So in, in the word pet and pop both use uh, the letter, the, the sound P here, which is a plosive. So this is some linguistic nerdery. Um, plosive means we build up air in the mouth with the mouth closed and then all of a sudden the air is relief, released. So, puh, puh, and you can slow your slow it down and you can really feel the pressure building up. So it's interesting, there is, there is an explosiveness and that's why they're called plosives. So we imagine we're saying pop, there's a feeling and an experience that goes with that when we're meditating. So I wanna give a little demonstration of this technique briefly. Pop.
Papa. Papa. And it goes like that, very simple technique. So uh, popping these thoughts in this manner doesn't produce awareness, okay? It's helping us to recognize awareness, to rest in awareness. And hopefully over time, we are cultivating some trust to be able to rest in awareness that we don't need to do anything with thoughts. Hopefully that it, it loosens up the grip on thoughts over time, such that uh, we don't need to use the technique. And actually, it's a common experience that maybe at first you, you're you saying pop a little bit more often and then over, through practice, you're not using as much because you can see that you're just resting and not as distracted by thoughts. And that's the phrase, distracted by thoughts, okay? Thoughts themselves aren't inherently a problem or distracting. So uh, as I mentioned, this practice is energetic, even though we're doing on a, uh, using the word on a softer uh, level and softer volume, there's energy to it. So if your system feels agitated, you're energetically feeling agitated or anxious or nervous, you can skip this, okay? You don't have to do this particular version of a practice. Everything we're doing in this training, there are uh, options. These are options for you to practice and use whatever most serves you in any given moment. So, you know, always pay attention uh, to that. Um, and this is also a practice that uh, I would do very short, you know, not, not super long. Do it briefly, see how things feel. It's always good also to ground uh, ourselves after this. Feel the feet, feel your feet on the floor, feel your seat feel where you're at, okay? Um, because when we use this, again, you might notice a little bit more of a heightened energetic state, a little bit. That's not the purpose, and it's not saying that that will happen, but it can happen, okay? Um, okay, so I think that's all I wanna say for this, and now we can practice. <laughs>